morning, good morning, good morning. We're waiting for people to chime on in. And as we're waiting, I'm going to sit here and uh, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for those who are going to listen today. Thank you for those who will listen to this later, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the hot sun, Lord, that is shining upon us. And thank you for the coolness, Lord, of a, of a cold spray bottle, Lord. Thank you for all your wonderful blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the attacks of the enemy that you know and letting us know that we're on track, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. God, and by now, hopefully, you've watched uh, um, last week's session. We kind of did a shift from going through from Genesis to Revelation um, to um, talking about discipleship and what that looks like. And uh, we've done this topic and started a podcast um, not too long ago called Cornerstone Bible Talk. Please like, share, subscribe be part of that and you can find that at um, family shepherd on youtube and also on spotify itunes amazon music um, last um this last recording we had a uh, special guest brother nate miller um, from katie's kentucky and we're so thankful for that brother um, i met many many moons ago we're so thankful for him and the work that he's doing such an encouragement as always the brother and, and his life and words and i love that brother and uh so thankful for uh minister clayton bridget and uh, his friendship and and so we we had a trio of discussion there in the word of the lord and what discipleship looks like and going out we've made the god let's make the gospel the central thing <laughs> let's make the gospel let's look you know we, we've been through that journey through the book of acts and the importance of the gospel and today we're going to talk about um his miraculous power last week feel the holy ghost this morning thank you for your word thank you lord healing the brother phillips even so right now oh god from the top of his head to the sole of his feet oh lord those that will listen let miraculous power flow even so right now god that as they hear these words and that they're encouraged that their bodies are healed their sickness is destroyed it's removed from the body lord di sugar diabetes be gone in jesus name Cancer, be gone in Jesus' name. Doubt, confusion, be gone. We lose faith in this hour. We lose healing in this hour. We lose miraculous power in this hour, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And if you felt that comment, we, we want to hear from you out there. We're doing this to hear from you. Um, I know many of you are also being fed probably at a local establishment. Amen. And hopefully you're leaving a tip. <laughs> no, let me stop. Lord forgive me. But um, you know, if 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 you're being if if you're being fed, look, this is to supplement your faith, right? Maybe you're not getting what you need as a believer. Um, not every place is conducive for growth. And there's some things we ought to look forward in growing in Christ. It's not about punching in your spiritual time clock. It's about the change that happens, the metamorphosis, the change in you. Right, right. You know, we were talking about that. I was talking to someone earlier this week about that, um, and 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 who you know, who are in leadership. I'm somewhere. I'm not going to disclose all of that, but just the importance of discipleship. Like, and and people are in different stages of growth. Right. Um, you look at Philippians when it talks about the emptying out of ourselves. A lot of people come to the gospel because of what they need. But in walking with God, after God begins to do the work in you, 
right, and you die to yourself, it's what can I render? What can I give? Right? God pours inside of us so that we might pour out into others. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of, of the power may be of God and not of us. And so we, we have to understand that dynamic in, in spiritual growth and where people are. Right? Some people are at the, the very beginning where they need, they need. Jesus met them at their point of need. He didn't just send people away hungry. He didn't just say, go and be filled. Okay, we, we have to understand that. And a lot of times we're trying to, for, you know, force the gospel down people's throats when there's no connection, there's no relationship. Doesn't work that way, folks. If he that winneth souls is wise. And so we have to go to spiritual maturity and perfection. And sometimes we get caught up in systems that don't allow growth. It's a mindset of judgment, of, 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 of all of this garbage from the pit of hell that doesn't allow growth. Right? And it is from the pit of hell. When you got constant judgment, criticism, complaints, things that are going on that it's not producing growth. And we talked about that in our podcast, how to squelch the noise and push forward in the Holy Ghost. Because that's where the Spirit of God leads us. And you, you have to understand, and, and, and we see this through the gospel, that there were many places where the gospel went that they were not received. And we're going to talk about this today. Um, unbelief. And that's the biggest hindrance to the gospel moving forward is unbelief. Um, and we're going to talk about this today. Before we do, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 4. I want to read something there for you. Lord, give us wisdom this morning. Guide us, lead us, open up our understanding that we might grow thereby, Lord, O oh God. In Jesus' name. And we, have, we have many people pointing the finger but not being able to see in the mirror of the word. Um, and so, if we're pointing fingers, we're in the wrong spirit. We need to look through the mirror of the word and control what we can control, and that is ourselves and our attitude and our emotions. Okay, yes, the words of people hurt, but also understanding where do we take that hurt. We take it to the cross of Calvary. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And that doesn't mean that God's going to strike them in our lifetime or do whatever. He's going to do whatever he deems merciful and righteous judge to do. It's just not our work. Right? Jesus never gave us um, an armament, a weapon of vengeance. He gave us the sword of the Spirit. And so if we're going to fight against demonic activity, we have to use the word and it has to be coupled with the spirit, folks. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, right? This is election season and a lot of people are twisting the word of God to fit their agendas. Okay? We're not rightfully dividing the word of truth if we're doing that. And, and, and let me ask you to those who are doing this, was that Jesus' purpose? Because I, I, I don't see anywhere in the gospel where he says fight against political leaders. Uh oh, he was about his father's business. Quit all this mess and focus on what God has called us to do. His work in the, in the earth. You know, let's, let's, let's quit all this because we're, we're causing confusion in the body of Christ. A lot of confusion. And division. Because now you've made the church of a certain political party. That's not causing confusion. That's not causing division. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You can disagree with me, agree with me. Frankly, I don't care. That's your problem, right? I know what I've been called to do, right? And that's to do the will of God in this hour. I must be about my father's business. The Lord told us how to handle things. He said, pray. I was just listening this week. 
Pray for those who are in authority. You don't like what they're doing? Pray for them. I don't like what people do to me daily sometimes. I pray for them. <laughs> I don't need to lash back. I don't need to get my spirit all I bent out of shape. Make your focus the gospel. Can't go wrong with that, folks. And so, to each his own, you do what you want to do with it. At the end result, we all stand before the Lord. Okay? And we know what's going to happen. You're fighting against something that God has allowed in the earth. <laughs> and sometimes we're fighting against the very hand of God. I'm going to be quiet here. I don't know how I got on this subject, but that was a, a little commercial. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ooh, Acts chapter 4. Amen. We kind of, you know, read about this earlier this week about the, you know, the miracle, that the healing that took place with the man at the gate called Beautiful. Okay. And, and, and those disciples were persecuted because of that, because they preached Jesus. And, and we're going to talk about that, what miracles bring to the table. Miracles serve a purpose. And one of the purposes, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it, folks, but before I do the purpose of miracles, I want to read to this to you. After they were persecuted, right? They preached the gospel even before the rulers. And go to Acts chapter 4, verse 27 to 31. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom ye anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. To do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your words. This is our prayer. This is my prayer today. With all boldness I may speak the word. By stretching out your hand to heal. Lord, stretch out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Okay? Okay? For those of you who are preaching some other name, there is none other name. No other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Okay? He didn't leave that option up to you. Right? That's, that's what the word of the Lord says. And that's by the word we're going to be judged. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. There you go. Being filled with the Spirit of God ought to be a daily thing for us believers. We ought to be crucifying the flesh and walking in the Spirit. And that takes a lot of work. Pray. You know, that's what the believers job is to do pray in season out of season pray giving thanks is a method of prayer it's a spiritual connection we just started this session in giving thanks right make it a routine in your life change that negative outlook that you have in your mind stop focusing on what's not going right and give your mind a break and start going to holiness Amen. Give thanks. Thank you, Lord, that you counted me worthy <laughs> to go through this, to hear these things, to navigate. You're teaching me something. I'm growing in this. I'm becoming a better person. It's not meant to drag you down. That's what the enemy wants to do. It's meant to make you better. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so true amen we always want to put the negative spin on things quit it right change your mindset focus on the good 
the positive, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is pleasant, whatsoever is of good report. Think on these things. The Bible tells us how to handle anxiety, how to handle depression, how to give thanks, how to break the funk of the enemy that comes against you, the tactics, right? Breaking the curse. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. God is speaking to us, people of God. But then what are we going to do with it? Are we going to practice it and see the results? Or are we going to stay where we are and not grow? That's a choice we all have to make. Okay. And when they had prayed, the place where they were was assembled, where they were assembled together was shaken. The place where they were assembled. Okay. Understand that. Yes, it's good for us believers to assemble with one another. Um, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Just understanding that. The believers were of one mind and one accord to the point that they sold all of their belongings, right, you know, and they lived in harmony. It was that kind of camaraderie of, of you, you look at it, you know, when Jesus was with the 12 disciples, how did they get by? How did they live? Judas held the money bag, but Jesus was teaching them things. You, you understand that by example, he was teaching them what he wanted them to learn. And not everything that Jesus said to the disciples is written here. Okay? Not everything that he did is written here. And so we as believers have to look at an example. Right? The example of the believers and what they did. Many people are crying today. Oh, we're, we're, we're the, um, like the Old Testament, you know, we're the, the New Testament uh, body of Christ in the earth. Okay. Let's not be mocked, folks. <laughs> You're going to be surprised when you get to heaven and people are there that you didn't think were going to be there. You're not the righteous judge. <laughs> There's only one. And just understanding that, right? Understand the good old word of the Lord. And we, and we talked about judgment before and, and, and understanding that. Let's get off our high horses and let's do the will of God. Let's do the will of God in this hour. Right? And do it as unto the Lord and not unto man. So, glory to God. And then let that be our prayer. That with boldness we may speak his word. With miracles, signs, and wonders following. Yes, Lord, we gather as believers today. Stretch forth your hand to heal. Miracles, signs, and wonders. By the name of thy holy child, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. We believe in you for it, God. We're binding together and, and, and fasting and praying and believing that you're going to do it. In Jesus' name. And there's some of us here or that will listen to this later and say, that's not my gift. That's not what God has called me to do. Well, remember, we read Mark chapter 16. The signs of believers. How do they know that you're a believer? <laughs> what fruit is flowing out of you? Because if Christ is in you, healing ought to be flowing out. Positivity ought to be flowing out. Genuineness, love, compassion ought to be flowing out. So don't give me this stuff as if it's not your gift. Okay? I don't want to hear that. Right? that that's just a cop-out. That's just an excuse. Right? Quit all this mess, right? We want to come in our own mind and, and, and say certain things. No. Christ ought to be flowing out of us. Right? How is it that the 12 disciples went about Doing miracles. <laughs> How is it that the church multiplied through what? Through the miraculous. And it wasn't just them. Those 12 apostles went into all the world. And miracles continued to happen. Okay. And it wasn't just those 12. Because the believers caught on to it. 
They were all gathered here. The believers were gathered during this prayer in Acts chapter 4, right? And they all prayed this prayer. So let's, let's not count ourselves short of what God has called us to do. We as believers have power. I remember one time I had a headache. The headache wouldn't go away. And I, and I, and I laid my hand on my forehead and, 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 and took authority and power over the headache. And within seconds, the headache was gone. Try it on yourself. Pray for yourself. Right? This is a building of faith. Pray for others. Right? Let's not keep, let's let the river flow through and in us. A lot of people stop the river. They speak in tongues. They, they, they pray once or they make it a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday type of thing. And then for the rest of the week, there's no prayer. You know, they only, they only can pray in a certain place. He said pray everywhere. Let this life, mine, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's what we're talking about, folks, today. Discipleship. A change in our way of thinking that we might grow thereby. And if you haven't, please listen to the podcast on spiritual maturity. Right. So miracles serve a purpose. Right? That people would believe on God. Let's go to John chapter 2 and verse 11. This beginning of miracles, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Might call it the very first miracle that Jesus did. Maybe it's the first miracle that is written in, in, in the in the scriptures that Jesus did, because we don't know many things that Jesus did <laughs> that are not written. Right? Many miracles, works, signs, wonders. But the disciples wrote what impacted them. Right? It's just like being a witness of an accident. You write, you see what's impacting you from your point of view. And some of them were eyewitnesses. Uh, some of them heard from others. Or some of them were bystanders from, a, you know, weren't in that inner circle, but were out looking in. So you have to understand what's going on here with the gospel and how it's, how it's written and how it's meant for us to grow thereby. And for those of you who think there's contradictions in the Bible, God is perfect. It might seem to you that it's a contradiction, but maybe you're, you know, there's no contradiction in the Word of God. Right? We, we did a podcast a while back and somebody said, well, well, there's Scripture supporting this and Scripture supporting that. Is God confused in this hour? If God is perfect, would He give us a book of, full of confusion? That's, that's unbelief, folks. Quit all this mess. Maybe you're the one confused. God's not the one confused. I just shake my head, right? Because maybe if, if there's points of contention in what you're reading and what you're understanding, maybe we need to pray and say, God, open up my understanding that I might understand. Because the Bible says, if any man, of, if any one of us lack wisdom, let's ask of God. Nila Bashana. Feel the Holy Ghost this morning. God is speaking to us, folks. Speaking to me, through me, in me. You know, encouraging one another in this faith, in this gospel. Not cutting down, not putting down. This is about encouragement. This is about growing. This is about becoming what God has called us to become. So not caught in a system that is not causing growth. Let's grow. Let's grow by obedience to the word. Amen? So John chapter 2, we read about that. The, the miracle, the turning of water into wine. Thank you for those who tuned in for a second. You know, appreciate it that you're listening and hopefully you share this with someone else. Um, it's just growing, right? John 2 and 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, on the feast day, 
Many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. So miracles serve a purpose. That people would believe on God. And it comes from a heart that is empty, that is poured out to believe God. And sometimes there is that disconnect where people think that miracles is about them. No, the miraculous lives and flows through us, but it's about pointing to Christ, pointing to God. Christ did these miracles and many people began to believe on his name through the miracles. When they saw the miracles which he did. So miracles do have a purpose. It's to edify and to point to God. All right. Miracles have a second purpose, right? That people would hear the gospel and be converted. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things. And the multitudes with one accord he did the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. People are attracted, right, by what they see, right? our actions, Christ flowing through us. That's how people are going to believe and obey the gospel through our example. So what's flowing out of us? Is it Christ or is it us? And I talked about that. That's about dying daily, Christ out ought to be flowing in and through us. Whether it's at Walmart or the 99 cent store, Christ ought to be flowing through us. Drive through. Are you giving people attitude? Are you portraying Christ? Are you being nice? Is God flowing through you? Are you concerned about people or about what you have to do? You see, there's a difference between being a believer and an unbeliever. And many people can say they believe, but their actions can portray that they don't believe. Right? And so there's the disconnect in Christianity a lot of times. Our actions ought to be flowing through Christ. Christ ought to be flowing in and through us that others might come to him. That's what we've been called to do. Trees are made for a purpose. They're to give shade, they're to give fruit, they're to bless the land, right? We are considered right, a spiritual household, a spiritual tree. Jesus used that parable, the vine, abiding in the vine. You can't produce. So in, in John chapter 15, so just understanding that dynamic here that there's a purpose in miracles. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 13. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Yes, Philip was one of the disciples. So we see that. Signs and wonders, right? People were looking, were hearing, were seeing. Whoa, you know. Obeying the gospel through what God is doing. And so I want to talk a little bit about here before I close about hindrances to the miraculous. There are hindrances to the miraculous. Things that hinder God doing his work in the land. One of them is the flesh. Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 58. And we're going to go out and do this week and watch God do it. That word of faith, Matthew 13 and verse 58. Let's go to verse 57. So they were offended at him. Talking about Jesus. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Unbelief. The hindrance to the miraculous. Not believing God. Not believing him at his word. 
not believing in yourself and, and the work that God is doing in you. Believe in yourself. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if you have to constantly repeat that in the mirror every morning, do it. It'll change your perspective. It'll change your attitude. It'll change your look on yourself. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Just understanding, you can tap in into Christ wherever you are. In Mark 6 and 5. Mark 6 and 5. Now he could do... Now he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Christ marveled at their unbelief. He marveled. Even, even people, some won't believe. They shut their ears. We're going, la, 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 I don't want to hear. It's like that kid, right? Don't want to hear when it's time to go to bed. La, 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 la. They'd rather believe a lie than the truth. Okay. That's where pride comes in and ego. And a lot of that going around in, the, in, 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 in this world today. Those are the works of the flesh, folks. You gotta crucify that. You gotta put it to death. Glory to God. Miracle signs and wonders follow the believers. Praying for those needing a touch from God was something ingrained in them. It was something that was taught. It was a natural. It was just like breathing for them. So for you to say as a believer, that's not my gift, then... I question if you really are a believer. Oh, I question if you rather, if you really have faith. And maybe you're, you're, you're growing to faith, but just understand. Wherever we go, we bring Christ in the situation. We are the ministers of good. Servants unto Christ. Whether it's in a hospital room or whether it's in the cafeteria whether it's in the middle of the desert somewhere, having a worship service. Just understand, wherever we go, we bring God in the equation. Right? And we're so focused on, we're so focused on bringing people to a location to experience God when they ought to be experiencing wherever we are. Oh. Uh huh? Whether at home, whether out Starbucks, wherever you go, we are ambassadors unto Christ. I was talking to a brother this week about that. And how we're so focused on um, um, trying to bring people into a location and we're not even exemplifying him outside. And so we have this mindset that only God... We only, only certain believers, only, only certain people can do this. Oh, 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 that hinders the gospel. And why do we do that? For power and control. And Christ never taught that. Okay? We can twist this parable to mean that, just like we can twist any word to mean what we want it to be. But I guarantee you, when Philip went into Ethiopia, when he met that Ethiopian eunuch, he met, he met him near, the, near a body of water while he was going out spreading the gospel. Right? And he didn't say, bring him back to a certain location so that we may baptize him. He baptized him there in the river of water. Here is water. What does hinder you to be baptized? Right? So sometimes our mindset is wrong. Right. Because we're not understanding the work of the Lord. We want to hinder the gospel. And I've had so many people 
throughout ministry hinder the gospel for their own pride and their own, their own, their own. I'm just going to put it that way. It's in the middle of the desert baptizing people. <laughs> uh, made it available. Didn't hinder people from being baptized. Didn't tell them come back on, on baptism Sunday. No, here is water. What doth hinder you? Now, today is the day of salvation. Now. Oh, you don't have a body of water? Find a local pool. All right, let's quit all this mess. We've hindered the gospel in so many ways for our own sake. And that's not what Christ taught. Okay. Let's be about our Father's work in this hour. What doth hinder you? You, you don't need, you know, you don't need to go to Pentecostal to an altar to receive the Holy Ghost. Many have received the Holy Ghost in the shower. People have received the Holy Ghost out in the middle of the desert. Brother Harrison, if you're listening to this, he's a witness of it. Okay? Let's understand the work of God. We've hindered the gospel because of our unbelief. And it's not Christ, it's that we put Christ in the box to fit agendas. And that's not how the gospel is going to spread, folks. Let's go forth in his name. Let's do the work of God in this hour. Let's be about our Father's business. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the miraculous. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. Help us to go forth. Stretch forth your hand to heal. Miracles, signs, and wonders done through the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Help us to grow thereby and be about your business. We love you today and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's grab a hold of this, folks. Let's apply it. Let's be about our Father's business. In Jesus' name, be encouraged. Love God, love people. In Jesus' name. Until next time, let's see what God's going to do. I'm believing him for it. Let's believe him for it in our lives. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. If you've been blessed, share this with someone. Be about your father's business. Let's do the work of God. In Jesus' name. I'll look for my stylus. <laughs>